Perry for designing the promotional trailer as well as all the posters you see around the school. Thank you to Mr. Nicholas Hudson as well as Mr. Wayne Adams for helping build and construct our set. Thank you to Ms. Hamilton Cooper and all her wonderful art students for creating the beautiful artwork on our set. It's amazing. Thank you. And last but surely not least, thank you to you, our audience. Whether you are buying t-shirts, tickets, or ads to the show, your support means the world to us and we couldn't do without you guys. So thank you. Now before we begin, we thought it'd be nice to give everyone a brief synopsis of what Jane is really about. You see, when Jane was a very young girl, both of her parents died of typhus. She was left an orphan, and her uncle Reed took her in. Her uncle Reed was a very kind man. However, he died in what was called the Red Room of his home when Jane was still very young. Jane was left to be cared for by her aunt Reed, or Mrs. Reed. She was very cruel to Jane and never liked her. She even locked her in the red room of the home as a punishment, where Jane swore she could feel, see, and hear the ghost of her uncle. When Jane had gotten a little bit older, her aunt decided to send her to an orphanage called the Lowood School. The Lowood School was run by an evil man named Mr. Brocklehurst, who often called Jane a liar, even when she did nothing wrong. The only good thing about the Lowood School was Jane meeting her very best friend, Helen. Jane and Helen grew very close to one another. This, however, ended when Helen actually died in Jane's arms. When Jane was 18 years old, she was finally able to leave the Lowood School. She decided to become a governess, which is like a teacher that lives in the home with the children and instructs them on a daily basis. She became a governess for a place called Thornfield Hall. Now, Thornfield was run by a man, man named Mr. Rochester. Mr. Rochester had taken in a young French girl named Adele and was looking after her. Our play begins when Jane is 18 years old and just entering Thornfield Hall. Although the cruelness of Mr. Brocklehurst and her Aunt Reed are well in her past, as well as her friend Helen's angelic kindness, they are still haunting her and influencing her, as ghosts of the past often. We thank you guys again for coming out to see our show, and if you have not done so already, please dispose of all food or drink. This is a beautiful, brand new auditorium. We would love to keep it that way. As well as turn off all your cell phones, not just silence them, as they can interfere with our microphones and be a little distracting. And trust me, you do not need to check Twitter or Facebook during the show. It is that wonderful. However, once the show is over, feel free to get on Twitter and follow at Easton Drama and let us know what you thought of the show. Now, without further ado, I present to you, Jane Eyre. Only 
make for happy children. This child is a liar. You think too much of the love of human beings, Jane. Until you acquire a more attractive manner, I really must exclude you. This child is a liar. You think too much of the love of human beings, Jane. I really must exclude you. Oh, Reed, let me go. I've had more trouble with this child than anyone with you. A tiresome passion. Always looking as if she were watching everyone and scheming. Oh, Reed. She struck my son, John, my very own boy. All because she said through a book at her, he never did such a thing. And it's a liar! It was not a liar! How dare she! How dare she! I would love her in the red room.
Be on your guard against her. Avoid her company. Shut her out from your converts. For this child might come falters while I tell it. This child is a liar. Master. 
watches be conducted in silence? Be quiet, child. Do you not Here is missing us, sir. I do hope that your day has not been too tedious. What with all your business that you attend to, and an interim sex, where I marvel at your courage. Madam, you should like some tea.
evasive. I should have liked something clear.
Yes, yes, Miss Eyre. I have plenty of faults myself. But nature intended me to be a good man. I might have been as good as you. Wiser. Almost as stainless. Little girl. Memory without blot or contamination. What an exquisite treasure. An inexhaustible source of pure refreshment. Is it not? How is your memory when you were 18, sir? All right, then. Nothing intended to offend Puddle. I was quite a people, but they wronged me and I degenerated. I wish I had stood firm. God knows I do. Dread of remorse when I'm tempted to err, for remorse is the poison of life. Repentance is said to be the cure. It is not the cure. Reformation is the cure. But I don't know what use it does me, cussed as I am. Besides, since happiness is a road could lead and I I have a right to get pleasure out of life. Sweet, fresh pleasure. Uh, it will taste bitter, sir. How would you know? You never tried it. Would you pretend to distinguish between a fallen angel and the messenger of the eternal throne? Between a guide and a seducer. Uh, to speak the truth, sir, I don't understand you at all. I cannot keep up this conversation because it has got out of my depth. Only one thing I know. You said you were not as good as you'd like to be. And I believe that if you tried hard, you would in time find it possible to become something that you yourself would approve. And in a few years, you would have laid up a new and stainless store of memories. Miss, uh, do you know what I was thinking about connecting with you and Del just now? I was arranging a point with my destiny. She stood there by the beech trunk, like one of those hags from a Scottish play. You like Thornfield, she said, lifting her finger in the air to write the memento. Like it if you can. Like it if you dare. I will like it. I dare like it. I know what my aim is and what my motives are. And at this point, I think that all that both are right. They cannot be said to require a new law to legalize them. You take all the power with which the divine alone can be trusted. What power? Of saying, let it be right. The very words you pronounce them. Let it be right. May it be right. Where are you going? It is time for Adele's class, sir. Are you afraid of me because I talk like a sphinx? I am confused, but I am certainly not afraid. You are afraid. Your self-love dreads of blunder. I have no wish to talk nonsense. And if you did, it being such a brave and quiet mantra, I would have thought it since. <laughs> Do you never laugh, Miss Eyre? Don't trouble yourself to answer. I see you laugh readily, but when you do, it's a very sad. Well, I must go now, and you too. It darkens.
if you can. Like it if you do. That's an invisible world to the kingdom of spirits. And that world is around us. And those spirits watch us. For they are commissioned to guard us. I heard a voice. I heard a voice. Who is there? Who is there? Who, Who is, is there? there?
And the leaders, there has to be a great party soon there. Do you expect him back tonight? Not tonight, and not tomorrow night either. In fact, he left word saying that he would be back in a week or two with some guests. So, in the meantime, we have a lot to do to prepare Thornfield. Uh, how long will they stay? Oh, I could not say. Mr. Rochester is very popular in society. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, of course, the ladies are very fond of him. Oh, uh, so there will be ladies coming to Thornfield, I suppose. Yes, of course. There will be Lady Amy, a very pretty girl. And Lady Ingram's two daughters, Mary and the Honourable Blanche. Of course, I only met Blanche once before, six or seven years since at a Christmas ball. Uh, what was she like? There were 50 or 60 ladies and gentlemen gathered at her ball, but it was clear that Blanche was the belle of the ball. She had a fine figure, sloping shoulders, and a long, graceful neck. Her eyes, they shone like her jewels, and her hair, raven's black, was so becomingly arranged. Her, she wore a white dress that became her admirably. I wonder no wealthy gentleman has taken a fancy to her. Uh, Mr. Rochester, for instance. <laughs> there was at one time thought that they would make a match of it, and I still would not be surprised if it did come to pass today. I'm off to go make breakfast, mind you don't be late. A greater fool than Jane Eyre never breathed the breath of life. I do care. You, a favourite of Mr. Rochester. I forget fools. You, gifted with the power of pleasing him. I seldom put and never keep things in order. Listen, Jane Eyre, to your sentence. Tomorrow, you will draw and chalk faithfully your own picture without softening one defect. And under it, you will write portrait of a governess. Disconnected, poor, and plain. Afterwards, take a piece of smooth ivory and in your most delicate pencils, draw the loveliest face you can imagine, according to the description given by Mrs. Fairfax. Remember the raven ringlets, the fine figure, the dark and brilliant eyes, the... No sentiment, no regret. I will endure only sense and resolution. And whenever in the future you should chance to fancy Mr. Rochester thinks well of you, take out these two pictures and compare them. Such should be my remarks if I were. 
Do you not agree, my lady mother? Of course, my lily flower. Lady Ingram, very intolerable. And when I marry, I resolve that my husband shall not be a rival, but a foil to me. I will exact an undivided homage. His devotion shall not be shared between me and the shape he sees in the mirror. And finally, the Honorable Blanche Ingram. But what of Mr. Rochester? And now, I knew the introduction of a new topic. Mr. Rochester, do you second my motion? Madam, I support you on this point as well as every other. Then I'll leave the burden, bringing it forward. Signor Eduardo, will you play for me tonight? Don Bianca, if you command it, I will. I lay on you my solemn behest to limber up your fingers as they shall be wanted on my royal service. I am all obedience. Take care. If you do not please me, I will shame you by showing you how such things should be done. That's like offering premium on my capacity. I shall now endeavor to fail. Ah, but if you err willfully, I will devise a more proportionate punishment. I should think Miss Ingram should be a little more lenient. She has an power to inflict chastisement beyond mortal endurance. <laughs> Explain! Your own fine sense to inform you that one of your frowns would be a sufficient substitute for capital punishment. Your words please your queen, my lord. Oh, show me that! Oh, what a lovely child! It is Mr. Rochester's ward, I suppose, the little French girl you were speaking of. Oh, come here, my dear. She is quite the little puppet, Mr. Rochester. Where did you pick her up? I did not pick her up. She was left on my hands. I thought you were not fond of children. Nor am I. Then what induced you to take charge of such a little doll is that. What did you pick her up? I did not pick her up. She was left on my arms. Well, you should have sent her to school. I could not afford it. Why, I suppose you have a governess for her. I saw someone with her earlier. Is she gone? Oh, no, there she is. I suppose you pay her. I should think it quite as expensive. I have not considered the subject. No, you may never do consider economy or common sense. You should hear mom on the chapter of governesses. I should have had at least a dozen in my day. The half ridiculous and the other detestable. Were they not, mama? Did you speak, my love? My governesses, mama. My dearest, don't mention the word. I've suffered a martyrdom from their incompetency and caprice. I hope it may do her some good. I know to her, but I am judging physiognomy, and in hers I see all the faults of her class. What are they, Master? I will tell you privately. But my curiosity craves food now. Ask Blanche, she's nearer you than I. Oh, don't refer him to me, Mama. I have one thing to say of the whole tribe. They were nuisance. Not that I ever suffered much from them. Oh, what tricks we used to play on our Miss Wilsons and Miss Grays and Madame Hubert's. Do you remember, Mary? Oh, yes, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what tricks we would play and how we tossed our books around the schoolroom. Oh, you villain child, she will. We used to quiz our governesses, too. She was such a good creature. She would bear anything. Now, I suppose we shall have an abstract of memoirs of all the governesses extant. And to do so, I move we adjourn to the drawing room for your billets, Mr. Rochester. Madam, your pleasure is mine. Ladies. speak to me in the other room. You seem to be engaged and I do not wish to disturb you. And what have you been doing during my absence? Nothing particular. Teaching Adele as usual. I'm getting a good deal paler than you already were. What is the matter? Nothing at all, sir. You didn't catch a cold that night in my room, did you? Not in the least. Then come to the other room. You're deserting too well. I am tired, sir. 
am a little depressed. What about? Tell me. Nothing at all. I am not depressed. You are so much, in fact, depressed. A few more words will bring tears to your eyes. Indeed, there they are now. If I had more time, I knew what this all meant. Well, tonight, I excuse you. But just know, as long as my visitors stay, I expect you to appear in the drawing room every evening. It's my wish. Don't neglect it. Now send Mr. Fairfax for a dinner. Good night, Mom. Oh, 
great means for you. Indeed. So will you see her? I will see her. I will see her. By all means. I did as he asked, 
I sought Mr. Mason and I delivered the message. The company stared and at a late hour. I heard the visitors go off to their chambers. This way, Mason. This is your room. His tone set my heart at ease. Rochester! Rochester, for God's sake, come!
feelings in one's bones about the future are often strange things. When I was a young child, I was told that a dream of an infant was a sure sign of trouble. That night at Thornfield, I dreamt of an infant, and the next night, I knew the next. He was a wailing child one night, a laughing child the next. That afternoon, I was summoned downstairs by a letter. Jane Eyre. It was from Mrs. Reed. It was from Gateshead. Bring me Jane Eyre. The letter was hinted with troubles. A fortune lost in gambling. Her son John Reed was dead. Perhaps it was suicide. Bring me Jane Eyre. She wished to see me, would not rest until she saw me. Is that Jane Eyre? Yes, Anne Reed. How are you? Stand away. Don't annoy me by putting the red clothes fast. Are you Jane Eyre? I am. I had more trouble with that child than anyone knew. Her incomprehensible disposition, her fits of temper, her unnatural watchings of one's movements. Aunt Reed. Who is it calls me aunt? She would not call me aunt. Finally. You are, Jane. Is there no one in the room with you? No one. What we think of a little in life burns us in our final hour. Leave us. But who is William Arrow, Aunt? Aunt! Jane. How my husband loved it. Poor Puny. Do you have the goodness to send me the address of my niece, Jane Eyre? I wish her to come to me in Jamaica. I shall never forget that day when she turned on me. I intend to adopt her. Declared I had treated her with miserable cruelty. To make her my heir. Was as if an animal I had struck looked up with human eyes and cursed me in a man's voice. Thinking of more and I tell you I cannot forget it. I took my revenge, wrote him her uncle, told him she had died of the typhus at Liverpool. If you could be persuaded to regard me with some love or kindness, she had a very Bad disposition. Many times as a child I would have been glad to love you. Impossible to understand. You have my forgiveness. She was born to be my torment. Be at peace. Be at peace. Love me then or hate me as you will. You have my full and free forgiveness. Be at peace. Be at peace. Be at peace. <gasps> Jane, 
Why do you turn your head? I suppose Adele ought to go to school. I'm sure you perceive the necessity for it. You get her out my bride's way. You might otherwise walk over her. The sense of the suggestion fell down in you. I should hope that Adele and I would both be safe out of the house before your bride enters it. I will advertise immediately and... Advertise? Not at all. I myself have found a place for you. In Ireland. But... The distance... From what, Jane? Oh, from England. And from Thornfield. And... Well... From you, sir. Ireland is a far ways away, but I can't do any better. What is there to be helped? Are you anything akin to Do you think, Jane? Sometimes I have a strange feeling about you. Is it the string here? Not to, to one there. And I'm afraid that the boisterous channel never came between us. The cord of communication would be snapped. And how we take to breathing in. And as for you, you would forget. That I never should, sir. You never. I wish I'd never been born, nor never come to Thornfield. Yes, you're sorry to leave it. I am sorry. I love Thornfield because in it I have lived a full and delightful life. I have known you, Mr. Rochester, and it strikes me with anguish to feel that I absolutely must be torn from you forever. I see the necessity of departure, and it's like looking upon the necessity of death. Where do you see the necessity? In the shape of Miss Ingram, your bride. I have no bride. But you will have. Yes, I will. I will. Then I'm telling you, I must go. No, you will stay. I swear it. I tell you, I must go. Do you think I can stay here to become nothing to you? Do you think because I am poor, obscure, and plain that I am soulless and heartless as well? You think wrong. I have as much soul as you, full as much heart. And if God had gifted me with some beauty and wealth, then I should have made it as hard for you to leave me as it is now for me to leave you. I'm not talking to you now through the medium of conventionalities. It is my spirit that addresses your spirit, just as if both had passed through the grave and we stood at God's feet equal, as we are. As we are. <laughs> Let me go, you are a married man as good as one in went to one you do not truly love. I would scorn such a union. I'm... Let me go. Jane, don't struggle so. Be still. Like a bird in the net. I know. Bird. I know the net ensnares me. I am a free human being. True. So you shall decide your destiny. Jane, I offer you my heart and my hand. You play a farce and I laugh at it. Jane, I'm asking you to pass through life at my side. Your bride stands between us. My bride is here because my equal is here and my likeness. Why do you look at me like that? I'm trying to read your face. I could not, I would not marry Miss Ingram. Jane, will you marry me? Ernest, do you truly love me? I swear it. Say the words. Say them. Edward, I will marry you. 